I thought I'd break it down to you and do this video, which is basically just my idea of what we should have in our kits as micro low budget independent filmmakers right now this isn't one of those kind of videos where it's like this is the lowest budget lighting kit to fit all your needs and it's like three little dinky lights that's not the kind of video this is this isn't really about saving money because in my experience when you skimp on money especially when it comes to lighting you're going to pay for it later down the road you're going to end up having to replace those fixtures within four to six months and you're going to end up spending more money than you would have if you would have just bought the good thing in the first place right right so that's more of what this video is and also it's more of a variety of different lighting fixtures you know stuff that um, you know each light has like its own function rather than just like three LED panels and away you go that's not really how it works in the real world so this is how we're gonna break it down this is my idea as a, a really solid little kit that can kind of provide all uh, essentials meaning you can use it for your corporate shoots you can use it for music video shoots you can use it for narrative stuff uh, interviews wh whatever it is you got to do this is enough tools I think in my opinion to at least get you in a great starting point so let's start it off first of all as most lighting kits you are gonna need a good key light now in my experience if you've seen my videos I have done multiple videos on the Kino fixtures I'm a big fan of Kino back in their heyday they were the industry standard now today uh, Ushio this crazy brand that we found on Amazon they have made LED bulbs that fit into the Kino Diva fixtures I've done a whole video on this here's a link I'll also put a link down in the description below so if you are a Kino Diva owner and you want to take it to the next level I would highly recommend you check out that video now for me I have a complete kit I have two diva four banks and one Kino diva two bank for me that is uh, especially the four banks those are amazing sources for key lights now um, if you are one of those owners or maybe you're looking to get a good secondhand deal because now is the time to pick up those Kino diva fixtures in the secondhand market right check out Facebook market check out offer up check out share grid they sell stuff on there or even your local Craigslist because you just never know right just because you show up and check something out doesn't mean you've signed something in paper saying you have to buy it you can always say no and walk away right that's the beauty of buying secondhand gear and checking it out for yourself uh, unless you just want to go you know the brand new route then for a good key light I would highly recommend the aperture 300 D and here's primarily why that is a huge source with a lot of high output so you can cover uh, big key lighting for big wide establishing shots or even if you're battling some windows within the shot uh, the 300 D is gonna do that for you but also because it's a good hard source as a Fresnel and if you spend the extra hundred bucks for the mini dome which I highly recommend you do you can quickly turn that hard source into a nice broad soft source that is ideal for a super strong key light now if you're someone like me and you're rocking the Kinos you're wondering well how can we make that a hard to soft source well first of all the Kinos are already an excellent soft source especially with the flows years that they come with you essentially turn those bad boys into gigantic soft boxes now if you're worried about the output of those another big reason to swap out those old Kino fluorescent bulbs with the Ushio LED bulbs for two primary reasons one in my experience I've been getting anywhere from two to four stops higher output with the LED bulbs also uh, when you dim those fixtures now they no longer shift in color temperature which used to be a problem with the Kino fluorescent diva fixtures as soon as you dimmed those bad boys you would change the color temperature dramatically but now with the new Ushio LED bulbs there is no color temperature temperature changing plus it's safe for travel they're not going to get broken as easily as fluorescent bulbs and it's going to consume less power but to make it a hard source it is going to take a little bit more work you got to shape it with the barn doors you got to throw on the honeycomb grid you got to bust out your modifiers and so yeah it is a little bit more hard work but it can be done and if you are like me and you have two four banks you could put them side by side and have an extremely huge large source as your key light now let's get into the fill light um, if you're battling lots of windows and, and maybe you're not going for a high contrast look and if you need an actual lighting fixture as your fill light then that's where you know your your Kino 2 bank is going to come in if you need a lot of high output or your aperture 120d to battle to go along coincide with your 300d this is I'm talking for high 
uh, high kind of uh, low contrast ratio looks, right? Or if you're battling a lot of windows within your shot, you're gonna need as much output as you can. But normally what I like to do, I don't even like to have a fill light. I like to just hang up a, a sheet of duvetine, which is basically a negative fill. It's exactly what it is. And then that's gonna give you a nice contrast ratio for those dramatic scenes. If you don't want as harsh of a dramatic cut, you just hang up an ultra bounce. And you can get the ultra bounce in a really cool little five in one like this. I I have three of these in different sizes and these are awesome because you get everything you need within these bad boys. You have your black negative fill, you have silver, you have gold, and then when you unzip these things, there's diffusion on the inside, but there's also an ultra bounce in there. That's the, that's the pure white one, okay? And the ultra bounce is a great way to have as a fill, as a fill light, and just bounce back that fill. And that's what I would highly recommend for a fill light. I would only bust out another lighting fixture if like, as I was saying, if it was like something like a high corporate gig where they don't want a whole lot of contrast, or or, like I already said, if you're battling light coming from windows that are within your shot, right? Another uh, good light to have on hand is some kind of LED one by panel. I've been rocking this Dracast 500 Pro LED. I've done a whole video on this. Um, one caveat, if you have seen the video where I compare this to the GVM, that is the great video maker uh, LED panel, the bicolor one. Um, you'll notice in that video that the GVM seemed to have a little bit more higher output than the Dracast. However, things have changed. I've recently uh, kind of advanced in terms of what I've been using as a light meter, and there will be a future video coming out with that. Uh, I'll be comparing the Siconic Lightmaster Pro with the Cinemeter 2 app with the Luxie for All Lighting Dome. Some pretty interesting results on that. I actually forgot about that until just now, so I will be doing that video. But I will say, after measuring the output of the GVM with the Dracast with a true Siconic light meter, the Tracas is actually beating out the GVM. So I've ditched the GVM altogether and just primarily went with this LED panel. Now, why would you want one of these if you have like some big key light or other, you know, let's say you're someone like me and you have two Kino Diva four banks and the two bank, or if you're going the aperture route, you already have a 120D and a 300D. Why would you need some kind of LED panel? Well, few different reasons. These are great for even a softer, uh, lower output uh, fill light or, but mainly what I like to use these for is for background lighting and kicker lights and things of that nature. You can do a lot with these, especially if you get one that's bicolor. This one is not bicolor, but you can drop different gels inside of it. They're easy to shape. Uh, if you get a good one like this, it has barn doors. It's hard to find good one by LED panels that have barn doors. So that's one of the one-ups of the Jacast. Plus they're super well built. You can put a V-mount on here. It You can change the color temperature with the hard gels it comes with. But another cool thing is that um, you, can you can easily change these into little tiny soft boxes. This one comes with a Chimera that just pops on the outside. Or if you just have like a normal app aperture one by panel, you can just pick up one of these bad boys. And these are little pop out uh, soft boxes made to go around a 12 inch LED panel. So that's just another cool way to have a smaller, way smaller fill size light, or, you know, just there's multiple ways to use a little one by panel as a kicker light or just some kind of background light. And it's just nice to have that in your arsenal. I would highly recommend some sort of other miniature LED panel. I know this kind of seems extreme, like why I have all these different kind of lighting fixtures, but to me, in my experience, in all my different shooting situations, these little one by panels like this, come in super handy. This is just a little Aperture 198. You can pick these up for dirt, dirt cheap. Again, I'm gonna have links to all of this stuff down in the description below. Um, these are great. You can even upgrade to the F7, which is built in by color. Um, I, uh, I did own the F7, but I ditched it. This one just seemed to be a little bit more reliable in terms of battery life. And uh, so yeah, so I'm just sticking with this and I can just change the color temperature with the hard gel. But these little lights are indispensable for hiding inside of uh, real practical lights. If you're like me, you don't like carrying around a bunch of bulbs to swap out practicals with. I just take one of these and crab clamp it up inside of a lighting fixture. I do that all the time on shoots. I've done it here on the channel in lighting tutorials and things and lighting tests. These are great for doing that. I do that all the time. I'm always hiding this light around and it always, uh, 
is a great little thing to trick people into thinking it's a practical light when it's actually just a little LED panel. I just did a review on this bad boy. This is one of my new favorite lights, the little Falcon Eyes F7 pocket light. This is an RGB light. I would highly recommend you getting some kind of RGB light in your kit and you can't go wrong with this one. It's super affordable, it's highly durable, pretty high output and a pretty awesome little light. It's great for accent lighting, you know, for, you know, lighting up your background, um, doing things like this, what's going on back here. And just because you can dial in the exact hue and saturation, whatever color you want within the rainbow, it's in there. If you haven't seen my review on this, I highly recommend you go check it out. I'll put a link here down in the description below as well. But primarily why these RGB lights are so cool is because they have all these special effects already built into the lights. Um, Aperture has these on their new 120s. You can pick these up in maybe like a Quasar Science rainbow tube or do yourself a favor and just get one of these. If, you, if you're kind of like most RGB lights are really, really expensive, this one is super affordable, guys. Um, so yeah, I do a really in-depth review on this if you don't know about it, but you can't go wrong with having some sort of RGB light in your kit. Talking about quasars and things of that nature, these little tube lights are cool. I know this isn't a quasar tube, but uh, Caleb Pike did a video on these, and so I bought a few of these, and they're really awesome to have. There's one behind me right there that's doing that tungsten light back there along with the Christmas lights, and that's what they're great for, accent lighting, background lighting. You'll notice a lot of these lights, I keep saying that, accent lighting, background lighting, because to me that's huge. That's how you build depth in your scenes, right? I, I try to focus more on the background than I do on the foreground sometimes. With the foreground, it's really easy to build that contrast ratio split, and, uh, and as long as you have some negative fill, like right here, some duvetine just hanging off of a C-stand, you know, you need that stuff. You need you need the negative fill to split up, break apart all your lights. Otherwise, they all start bleeding together. If I didn't have this duvetine hanging right here, this would all just be blobby together and there would be no ratios. There would be nothing me separating from the background. It would all be together. So, you know, you're starting to see like how you can really uh, build some, some dynamics in your scene by lighting up your background and things of that nature. With that being said, Christmas lights. You know, I'm always on shoots uh, and, and and like, you know, kind of uh, sometimes I work on shoots where people that are kind of green, they will see my Christmas lights in my kit and kind of start laughing or whatever. But you can laugh all the way to the bank, but Christmas lights are amazing for doing just that. They're little accent lights and they're great. That's why you see them in a lot of guys' YouTube videos. It's just a super cheap, affordable, whoops, accidentally turned that on. Um, if you're interested in these little lights, I mean, uh, I'll put a link to these down in the description below. They do, uh, they're dimmable and they're bicolor, but I'll put this down for now so I don't keep turning it on. But yeah, the Christmas lights, you can pick them up in at a dollar store, right? You can find Christmas lights everywhere. They're just a super cheap, affordable way to have some cool accent lighting in your background. And if you've seen one of my lighting test videos lately, uh, if you combine that with a filter like the Lee Six Point Star Filter, you can get some really cool effects with some Christmas lights. If you're like me and you have a different source such as Kinos for your key lights and that means you don't really have a Fresnel light, I would highly recommend you picking up some sort of Fresnel light in your kit. And this little bad boy is super good for that. This is the Aperture LS Mini 20D. Perfect little uh, kicker rim light and it's a Fresnel. Now, why would you need a Fresnel light in your kit? Well, sometimes you need to do some kind of spotlighting. Sometimes you need to really single out a source or a talent, and it's a great way to do that. And if you don't want to do that, you could even put this on flood, put it on a C-stand, and put a china ball around it, and then you can get some really interesting effects too, like if you had to do an interrogation scene, or if you had to do some sort of, uh, I don't know, like a godfather look, you know, just lighting from above, and it's just super light, super lightweight, and super high output for how tiny this little light is. Put on a C-stand, put the china ball around it, and yeah, away you go. But at the same time, you could have a great little spotlight to do a nice little rim light on you. You can't go wrong with that, right? So that's mainly the main, the main fixtures there. So what did we learn? Key light, hard, it's a big, your highest output light is gonna be your key light right off the bat. You wanna make sure it's something that can go hard and soft, right? Meaning soft, you can really spread it around, make a big, nice, soft source, or hard lighting where it's kind of more, more uh, fine-tuned in, really narrowing in on the subject not spread around as much, right? So hard light, your fill light is generally gonna be a modifier, ultra bounce, negative fill, something of that nature. But if not, you know, 
throw in one of those little one by LED panels, accent light, background lighting, you need RGB light for that, you need a Fresnel light for that, can't go wrong with some little tube and or Christmas lights or some kind of little tiny miniature aperture LED panel. Uh, now let's get more on the modifiers. So if you're, if you, the, the quickest, easiest way is to get you like three of these five in ones. There's like, you can get all different sizes and it's everything. You get the diffusion, you get the gold, you get the silver, you get the ultra bounce, you get, you get everything you need, right? We talked about China Bowl. Just pick one of these up. You can get these all day long on Amazon, Ikea. This is an Ikea one. These are so dirt cheap and these are indispensable. Amazing for spreading sorts. You can put your Fresnel, you can put your little aperture Fresnel in here. You can put a little LED, little, you know, LED panel in here. You can hide little panels in this and you can get an awesome soft spread out source. Okay, that's one good modifier. Another good cheap thing you can do Go to your local fabric store, Joann's or something like that. Get a sheet of unbleached muslin, a sheet of bleached muslin, and then a sheet of black fabric, such as this duvetine right here. You're gonna need that. I would recommend getting like two of each, right? And then you have a great uh, little modifier kit with just some very, very basic film rags, but you can do a lot with those, right? You can easily with, you know, with your little, with your little five in one bust out and with uh, your little thing of muslin and two blacks, you can easily build your own book light. It's pretty simple, right? But if you're like me and you're only rocking one RGB light, you can't go wrong with a pack of gels. This is the Lee Lighting Pack Quick Location Gel Kit. Do yourself a favor, just pick this up. I take this on every single shoot. I use it all the time. And lastly, there's this. I know for a lot of you guys this will seem like repeats, but uh, I know a lot of the times Instead of me answering a million comments that just tend to be saying the same thing, it's just easier for me to put out another video. So here is the Westcott Fast Flag Kit. I've shown this plenty of times in plenty of videos. I've gone over this. This is great little cutters. There's two, you can get blacks. There's all, little tiny ultra bounce and there's, uh, you can, there's little scrims in here. You can cut down the light, one stop, half stop, what have you. And that's it guys. I mean, on top of that, you're gonna need like at least two C stands and some lighting stands and some sandbags. And I've done a complete video recently, just recently I've done a video on how to create your own DIY sandbags that are amazingly durable, really heavy. They're gonna hold down your C stands. Um, yeah, and you put your lights on your light stands and you use your modifiers for the C stands. And that's pretty much how it goes, guys. And if you go that route, I know that's not exactly the cheapest route, but you're gonna have an awesome little kit there. It's gonna cover all your needs, uh, no matter what the shoot is, and you're gonna be able to light pretty much anything in wides, in close-ups, everything. There's gonna be links down in the description below to all of this stuff. I'm gonna have other links to related videos of, you know, I've done videos on how to shape and modify light. I've done videos specifically on some of these fixtures. Those will all be down in the description below as well. If you're new here, I strongly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and follow along with us on our low budget indie filmmaking journey. And there's lots of fun, new, exciting stuff coming up. So look forward to that. And for now, that is a wrap.